Hi, good afternoon. It's Gene from Mavstar Observatory. We're looking at the data that has recently been sent in from one of our superstars, Jeff Down in Perth, Australia. And as you can see, uh, there is an anomaly uh, that clearly stands out. And what we have to do when we get um, data like this is discover whether it is a real anomaly or just, you know, uh, an error. And I'm going to show you a little bit later on how we decipher that. Now, if we just scan down, you'll see that on every given average month, we collect around 2,300 or thereabouts uh, separate readings at every 15 minute intervals, 24 hours a day, and that runs throughout the month. So it's, that's how we end up with around about 2,300 readings. And the unique thing about our magnetometers is we try and eliminate as many errors as we can in collecting the data. And, you know, obviously uh, we collect uh, the date and time um, of every individual 15 minute data collection and that allows us to you know check what happened on around about uh, you know anomalies like what we're looking at here so we're going back uh, to last month uh, around the 29th of when this anomaly occurred and what we want to find out is how or what uh, it was that caused this is it just a normal error in the equipment or is it actually part of a magnetic anomaly that is taking place and like I say uh, having the equipment that we've got we can do that now you can see that on average uh, there is a, a general fluctuation throughout a 24 hour period of around about two microteslas that as we know is perfectly standard anywhere around the world uh, it's probably slightly less in Hong Kong uh, probably around one microtesla uh, fluctuation whatever the reason for that is whether it's just on the cusp of the magnetic intensity and therefore the fluctuations are a lot weaker on those border uh, parameters of where the main intensity is uh, we will just have to wait and see uh, over a, a longer period so if we just have a look at uh, the data that we've been collecting from Perth, you'll see it's not uncommon for these little anomalies to occur. And they occur at different points in time in the month. Um, you know, we can see here there is more than one anomaly that has taken place. Um, that could be uh, the machine was shut off for a while, uh, the machine was actually moved. Um, but generally, we tell the people that have our magnetometers to screw them down, and if they can, uh, try and have a backup battery power source so if there is a short power cut at least uh, the magnetometer will still record for that period of time so I want to show you the raw data now that we collect and then uh, just try and figure out what took place on the 29th of last month with regards to the collection of the data and maybe by looking at the, ta uh, the time and date stamps we can figure out what, what that anomaly was or maybe what caused it. So let's go and have a look at the raw data. So here we are in Excel. Uh, we've got the raw data that was sent. Uh, there's 200, no, there's over, was it 3,000 separate individual data points? We'll have a look in a few seconds in any case, because as you can see from the very first left hand column, you've got the numbers. Um, I want to draw your attention to line, uh, where is it, where it drops, okay, so line 825, so after it took its 824th uh, reading, you can see um, it was reading uh, the magnetometer strength at 58.16 uh, microteslas so I'm just going to explain what column A B C D E F and G is right so that you get an idea so in column A zero represents the magnetometer um, I don't program all the magnetometers with the uh, location of where they're going but it could have easily been programmed so that zero didn't represent perf I could have written perf there and it would have come up perf in every column but again I don't think there's any need to do unnecessary uh, work with regards to keeping things nice and simple. So in column B we have the microtesla uh, reading in strength or the UT strength. Uh, in column C we have the hour and if we look at the very top column we can see 22, 22, then 23, 23, 23, then it goes 0, 100 hours, 
zero hundred hours, zero hundred hours, zero hundred hours, and that is an indication that every hour it's collecting four uh, samples of the intensity in the region where the magnetometer is. Um, every 15 minutes as you can see but when we get down to column 300 sorry 824 we see the the UT strength drop from 58 to 37 now was that um, a normal anomaly or was something else happening well if we look at the next column uh, column C this is representing the hours and we can see that during the change in the anomaly uh, there is also a change in the time it goes uh, from 2 o'clock, early hours of the morning, uh, to 7. And there's a gap. And there's about 25 data packets missing in that, in that little area there. Because it should have went uh, 333, 444, 555, 66, 777. And as you can see, it missed around 25 data packets. But what also happened is not only did we see an, a missing in the time, uh, where the magnetometer has probably been powered down and then powered back up we also see that the magnetometer now is no longer in the same um, direction as what it was uh, originally so what could have possibly been the case here is there could have been a power cut and it could have moved you know we could have also had at the same time of movements of the magnetometer uh, so for that reason, you know, uh, the missing time gap there and then we see, you know, um, a difference in the readings, I would say that it's not a magnetic anomaly at all. It's probably an error uh, with regards to the machine. I've been powered off and moved at the same time because not only do we see a missing of about uh, 25 data sets, we also see that the um, the heading or the UT sorry the UT strength is actually changed from you know 58 microteslas to 37 microteslas and so by checking the data like this we can find out whether we're looking at real anomalies or not if that had have gone you know been following the timestamps and we'd have had the drop um, then you know we could have questioned whether that was a real magnetic intensity anomaly that had took place but I'm confident uh, that this was just an error um, in in probably a bit of a movement or a power cut so there we go um, but if we go back to the data let's do that so now we're looking back at the uh, chart that's up on Pulse Shift News under uh, Mavstar Global Data if you just click on Perf you can get to this data yourselves if we look at the anomaly that took place we obviously know now that it's probably an error uh, more likely to be the case but it doesn't matter because if we look at the data that we was collecting before the anomaly happened and then after the anomaly happened, we can see that other than the error that we get, things are not really changing much um, at all. In fact, you know, it probably just slightly increased over the month, uh, maybe by half a microtesla, if that. Now, I could have... Uh, chop the first bit of data out and remove the error, but I don't like to do that. I like to, you know, what I re what I get given me, I like to put up there and try and explain if it's an error or if it is an anomaly that's taking place. You know, I like to do a little bit of investigation to find out what it is. Um, so, you know, even though these little errors pop up, it doesn't mean that the data is bad because we've got plenty of samples. Uh, before that error occurred and plenty of samples afterwards so we still know that the equipment's doing its job it may have been moved it may have been it you know gone through a power cut and been moved at some point might have been turned off and then relocated we just don't know but the point is is it's still doing a fantastic job in collecting the data because there is plenty of data after the you know the um, error that occurred and we can learn from the data that we've got there. So, not a major anomaly, uh, not much um, really as a change uh, taking place with that uh, high intensity region over Australia. And, um, you know, I just thought I'd uh, go through that with you guys um, so that you've got an idea of, you know, how we collect the data, what's on board the magnetometer. It's not just, um, you know, an XYZ magnetometer which has been. Um, programmed 
to focus on just intensity as opposed to direction as you can use them you can use them to you know work as a compass if you want these magnetometers it just depends on what equations you use uh, to collect the data in this incidence with the magnetometers we're using uh, the xy axis to work out the field strength as opposed to the xyz to work out the direction and by using math, you know, mathematical formula, you can work out the intensity as opposed to the, the direction. I don't want to bore you too much about it, but you see, you have to, when you're building these things, you have to think them through, especially when you want the data to come out in specific, um, um, you know, a specific manner. And it always pays, as I've learned, to sit down before you start writing these programs and think about what you want it to do at the end. As opposed to you know going halfway through the program, then realizing you've got to go back and change it all. Okay, I won't bore you with the programs uh, too much with that. Now, guys, before I end the video, I'm going to be very shrewd here, and you're going to probably think I'm as cunning as a fox, right? But talking about data and analytics, if I was to look at the analytics uh, for this video that I'm doing today, and at eight minutes into the video, I mentioned a link down below. Uh, to support the video and to support the um, observatory and if at that point that was the point where the majority of people switched off and moved on to something else on YouTube I would know that from that that people were more interested in obtaining free data uh, not interested in, in being supportive of the observatory and obviously I would know from that point on then that the majority of people are only here for just freebies and uh, we have had i thought we was going to uh improve this year with regards to you know um raising more money getting more equipment out into the field and you know obviously expanding the observatory but i think it's down to the same as what everything else is happening at the moment there is a slowdown of the general global economy and it is starting to really have a significant impact on our observatory now if i start looking at the analytics and at the point where i mentioned the link down there and people start disappearing then i know that the majority of people on our channel apart from our patrons our superstars and those you know same people that month in month out support the channel other than that i know that the rest of them are just here for freebies and they're not supporters then i have to act on that otherwise you know like i was talking about in a few videos ago that if you see your business struggling and yet you keep going at it in the same manner as you are you're probably going to lose everything now i have invested way too much into this observatory not just in time but money also and not only that we have other people that have invested money over the years uh, to support us to get us where we are today it is too much to leave to go to ruin at this point so if i continue to see it decaying like this then i'm going to change uh, the manner in which we deliver the information and I'm going to start looking after naturally those that support the channel and you know you can say I'm mean or whatever you know it's about the survival of this observatory guys that is the most important thing for me and it should be for a lot of you as well and I'll tell you why because in possibly two to four maybe seven years we are going to see this planet go through a magnetic pole reversal. We're talking less than a decade. Yeah. So we are at the most important time where we should, you know, be pushing as much equipment out into the field as possible. And, you know, just not taking notice of what is going on with regards to, you know, this pandemic, which is slowing other things down in this world. You know, there is importance in this observatory and it is important that we keep it going um, and especially you know we've got to look after those people that support it and I know that there's a lot of people that could have supported it that haven't and that they have came back uh, month in month out for the information completely free and not supported it at all so 
you know, it is, it is in a nutshell. You know, we can keep it free for all if we keep it funded at a reasonable level. Or we can take it down another route where only those that, you know, support the channel, support the observatory, get the data. And if the data is not worth nothing to you, then that's fine. Don't support it. But if you realise the implications of what is going on around you in this world right now, and you realise that the majority of the things that are taking place are solely down to two major anomalies. One, the Earth has not seen in 780,000 years, which is the pole reversal. And two, is the grand solar minimum that is taking place also. But as you know through following this work, you will know that both of them cause problems for us in this world because of the heliosphere shrinks, it lays more cosmic radiation in, which is our first uh, protection from cosmic rays. And secondly, the Earth is going through a magnetic reversal and our primary shield has weakened 20% already. And this isn't just me saying this. You know, this is supported by other government organisations around the world and accepted. This is an anomaly that is hot on and is still occurring, as you know. We monitor it every 17th of every month. We take a reading of where the magnetic north pole is currently. So if you want to remain in the know in this research that we do on this topic, then I'm just simply going to say, guys, we need to keep it supported. Simple as that. And if you're interested in keeping it supported, then there is a link down there. You can join us on Patreon or you can make a one-off payment on PayPal. Simple as that. You know, it's not mandatory, but remember, if it's not supported, then, you know, I have to make a decision in the short term of this channel. You know, um, you know, we've got to, we can't keep going like this. You know, I'm not prepared to let this go to the, you know, the bin, so to speak. So I won't say anything else, guys. Um, you know, um, tune in uh, again. Uh, at some point in the week and uh, you know we'll discuss more about the uh, occurring anomalies that are taking place in our daily lives and uh, until then I'll say what I usually do bye for now